What's up guys, Elliot Hulse here on a Sunday morning because quite frankly that's the only time I can get to Strength Camp to make a video. We're so busy all week long and it's part of the reason why I haven't been making very very many videos is because, well, I don't have the time to at Strength Camp, right? We've been so busy here. The old gym was more like a studio, right? I had open gym, we trained some athletes in the evening, but for the most part it was me, this camera, and carte blanche. So uh, it's a Sunday morning. The gym's empty, empty. We got a dog barking in the back there. So introduction to my new neighbor who's got dogs and he likes to rev his engine. And uh, I'm about to preach church up in here on a Sunday morning. So today I'd like to open up with a phrase that I heard uh, when I first listened to the Audible book. But here's the actual book, Iron John by Robert Bly, incredible book. If you're a man, you should probably read this book. You should definitely read this book. And uh, in the book, he goes through many, uh, he describes many of the stages and many of the uh, experiences that a man will go through in his personal evolution. And in one section, he uses the term, every wound is a womb. Right. In fact, he says uh, the wound as a as a male womb. Uh, I marked it here. The wound as a male womb on page two thirty three. And if you listen listen to the audio, it's it's incredible also. And uh, it got me thinking because I I've shared ideas like this with you guys in many instances. In fact, most of the time when you've sent me questions about things that have challenged you in your life, I refer to the idea that life works in very in, the very, in a very similar fashion to how things happen in the gym, right? You go to the gym, you go to lift weights, what are you doing? You're literally breaking yourself down. You're literally wounding yourself, right? This is science. Science says that if you go in the gym, you break down the tissue. There are micro tears. You become catabolic. It's a very break down activity when you go to the gym, but there's a reason why we do it, right? Why do we go to the gym to beat ourselves up and have micro tears in our tissue and, uh, and, and put ourselves in this catabolic state? So that we can become anabolic, right? Catabolic is the down process, anabolic is the up process. And this shows up everywhere in life, from the yin to the yang, from the night to the day, from the winter to the summer. It also happens in the cycles of your life. Now you've probably heard me use the term hero's journey and if you've, if you've studied Joseph Campbell, if you've watched any movie, right, they always follow a pattern that goes like this. You know, the hero comes full circle. Things in life happen in this cyclical fashion, catabolic, anabolic, so on and so forth. Break down, build up. I've even said to you guys, failure is important. You need failure in order to succeed, right? These, a lot of these things now, I hope, right? Ideas spread so quickly these days, it's incredible because I felt like when I was sharing a lot of these ideas, they were new and a lot of people were like, man, Elliot, I've never heard this before. But I think, you know, we live in a viral time and ideas are viral. And at this point, you know, the head should be doing this. When I say, yeah, failure is a part of success. You must fail. You must break down to build up. You must go down to grow up. So uh, in fact, uh, through some of my recent videos, right, a couple months ago I was creating some videos where I was training in the gym. They're very artsy videos where I wasn't saying very much. They had like a dark feeling to it. And, uh, and I called them catabasis videos. And uh, you know, a lot of people were curious, like, Ellie, what the hell are you talking about? What is this catabasis? Uh, a lot of people looked it up and whatnot and wanted to know. I'm looking it up right now so that I can, sh I can show you this. I put it on Instagram. If you guys want to look on my Instagram, um, I'm going to read it here to you now, but it's taken right out of the book, what catabasis means, right? And this is, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting the context for some pretty important stuff. In fact, some pretty important personal experiences and stories that I would like to share with you here today in this video. And it is my hope that everything that I'm going to share with you is going to support you in becoming a stronger version of yourself, right? Because if you think life is a linear process, right? You think it's just sunshine and, and skyways the whole time, right? Puppy dogs and, and, and Tootsie Rolls, you're bullshitting yourself. 
there is a going down process, right? I mean, it's even in our wisdom literature. Look at Jonah and the whale, right? Jonah was a fucking winner. Then he ended up in the belly of a whale, down in the ocean, right? Um, so let me back up for a moment before I give you too many uh, metaphors and analogies. Catabasis, the mark of descent, whether undertaken consciously or unconsciously, is a newly arrived at lowliness associated with water and soul, as height is associated with spirit. Water prefers low places, right? I said Jonah was in the whale in the ocean. Water, low places. The lowliness happens particularly to men who are initially high, lucky, elevated, right? I'm familiar with that. I'm definitely familiar with being high, elevated. You might say lucky, right? And uh, it goes on. The way down and out usually separates the young man from his companion flyers and from their support. And it makes him aware of a depression that may have been living unnoticed in him for years. A mean life of ordinariness, heaviness, silences, cracks in the road, weightiness, and soberness begins. And I could tell you that silence and soberness uh, is something I'm very familiar with. And of course, you know, you've been watching me go silent for the past several years, right? And it's kind of like, well, you know, you consume what I'm doing. You consume these videos. You relate to Elliot Hulse in a particular way, right? And I maybe even have supported you in certain endeavors in your life, be it at the gym or in dealing with the breakups, right? Your, what, how many times have I said it's good that your girlfriend cheated on you and dumped you, right? Heartbreak is good. That's one of my most popular videos. Heart, heartbreak is a good thing because you go down, you burn up, you die to a part of yourself so that you can be resurrected. This has been uh, in a, a foundation principle in my teachings for many years. Well. I'm not a guru, meaning I'm not the perfect being standing here preaching to you in such a way that uh, I, am, uh, I am offering celestial insights because I'm a pure being. That's bullshit. I'm, I'm far from pure, right? Crazy wisdom, crazier than Chogyam Trungpa, perhaps, right? This is the idea that, you know, we're all, no matter how, uh, how much you hold someone in reverence, they still shit, right? And I take shits. So, catabasis um, is something that we're, we're, we're all going to experience, including myself. And when I share these videos, or any of the YouTubers, I don't know, you know I really don't watch too many others, but um, if they're being real with you, and I have no other choice but to be real, it's really hard for me to fake this and to put on, to put on a smile when you know there's really no reason to, or my heart is not smiling, let me put it that way, right? You get, you get full transparency with Elliot Hulse. It's very hard for me to put on. So when I'm down, you're out, right? I'm, it's just gonna be obvious and I disappear. So what I'm saying to you is that you're literally watching, it is my desire that as you watch my videos, you can see the process rather than just hear the process, right? Allow me to be an inspiration by the way I live my life rather than the words I share with you. All right? And I think that gives us more of a, a real relationship, a real connectedness. When I shared the catabasis quote on uh, Facebook the other day, someone said, Elliot, that, what you just shared makes me feel that much closer and related to you because that's how I've been feeling. Well, yeah, I, I hope that's what these videos do. Provide some context for where you are in life by looking at perhaps an older brother, right? Look at me as an older brother. I call myself Uncle E sometimes when I write, right? So whatever the case may be, it's just my experiences that I want to share with you. So uh, what I would like to do in order to show you how wounds become wounds, because that's even better than catabolic and anabolic, a wound meaning like you, you've been cut open, right? This is the way he describes it too, a wound. If you think about a wound, an opening is like a vagina, right? You get, you get stabbed or you break something or you open up your flesh. 
it is so, in a way, and Robert Blyer describes it very well in the book, and I would love for you to read the book, but he says, it is an opening so that the soul can come in, so that there can be an awakening, so that you can, people who are too healthy, he says, people that are, that are too healthy, too strong, require a breakdown, an opening. Their body has to physically be wounded so that they could be humbled. Right? Interesting that word humble that begins with H-U-M, which is also the prefix for human, humility, humiliation, humor, and humus, which is dirt, which is going down, earthliness. That opening, that wound is also, you know, being a vagina, like I said, is also a womb. What is a vagina, right? It's an opening in the body that allows something to grow, something to be manifest, right? In the unconscious too, right? Because when a baby is growing inside a woman, nobody sees what's going on inside there. It's a mysterious happening with the, with the biology of the body and some celestial force, right? We don't really know, right? Science gives us so much, but there's a mystery there. There's a human being born. Well, the mystery happens within the male womb also, and there is a growth. There's a growth within so that you could be reborn without. Every single wound, be it a psychological wound, an emotional wound, right? How many people, right? Someone related the story to me the other day about, uh, you know, the two sons who grew up with an alcoholic father, right? Growing up with an alcoholic father is a wound. Right? One son grows up to be uh, worldly successful. Right? Ah, he, he makes a lot of money and shit. And the other one grows up to be a drug addict or whatever. And both of them answer, what would you do if you had the same kind of father? What they're saying is that what would you do if you had this wound? One guy took the wound and because he had perspective, because he was able to connect deep within, because he gave himself time to go down, granted that he's truly successful and not just a, a neurotic sociopath who makes a lot of money, which looks successful, right? We, we love sociopaths in our society because they make a lot of money and they rule, right? They got a lot of power. I'm talking about a truly successful man, takes that wound and grows something of a better version of himself. Right? This is, this, is, this is the growing stronger process. This is the becoming a stronger version of yourself process. Uh, and some people, without their perspective, they allow, they allow the wound to fester. How many people have an injury, psychological, emotional, an abuse, or physical, or born with, and they allow it to, allow it to destroy them? Right? They let the wound fester, and it turns, and they go down, and they stay down. These people will never rise up if never given perspective. These people will never rise up if they don't take responsibility. Every single one of our wounds, if we take responsibility for it, we are empowered enough to turn it into a womb where a stronger version of yourself is grown. Well, folks, Elliot Hulse is no stranger to this, and you might take a look at some of my previous videos to, take, to understand, to see me actually going through the process. And I'm gonna bring you up to date with where I am in, uh, in a new cycle, right? Because like I said, once, once you rise up, you go down, but you always rise up again, right? So, uh, interestingly, you know, I, made, I began making videos in 2007, and I made videos, I did what I had to do. I was really involved in strongman at the time. I had become a professional strongman, and I was winning. I didn't even make very many videos when I was be, being a professional strongman, because it was all I wanted to do was lift heavy shit. Right? And I became pro. And I took it one step further, right? It's so funny, my first cycle of steroids after becoming a pro and saying, well, you know what? If I'm gonna compete with these big boys, because I was competing with guys that were 60 pounds heavier than me, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what they're doing. First cycle, and you know what? Boop, pop my bicep, pop my right bicep. In that moment that I popped my bicep, and interestingly enough, it was after a strongman practice when I was in the yard helping my dad pull up some dead roots. As soon as that bicep tore, it's so funny because I, it's not that funny, I'm, I'm an aware dude. As soon as that bicep popped, I said to myself, well, there goes a version of Elliot Hulse. Now the bicep can be repaired, but I was just given an omen. I was just given a sign. I was just giving a wound for me to be reborn into something else. That was about 2010. 
All of the popularity that I gained through creating these videos happened directly after that. It wasn't until, it was very shortly after that that I wrote a book, and I'll make it, uh, if I remember, I'll put it down below for you guys to get it for free, called The Manifesto of Strength, where I, where I basically, in The Manifesto of Strength, uh, told my story. Right? I popped my bicep and I knew that I had to tell a new story to myself and to the world. Telling and retelling stories, your particular story, is very important, very resourceful. You will always be trapped in your dungeon if you can't reframe. Right? So I had to retell the story. I wrote a book, Manifesto of Strength. I wrote it down below. You, you'll see it down below. In that time, from that wound, I did a... Uh, you hear the bird? The bird's distracting me. I went in and I learned a lot of new things about myself. This is where I rediscovered dynamic meditation. This is where I discovered bioenergetics. Bioenergetics has been a tremendous gift for me in that stage between 2010 and about 2015, 2014 really. Uh, and as well as many of the other, uh, many of the other things that allowed my videos to be of great resource to you, but I denied in and of myself, meaning I wasn't willing to shed conscious light on, but it guided me, right? Bioenergetics was one, but also the Baha'i faith. Many of you may know, most of you probably don't know, that my wife Colleen and I decided to become Baha'is, which is a religion. I'm a religious dude. I've always been. I just didn't talk much about it from the time we got married. Uh, it's been over 15 years, right, since we've been Baha'is. And much of what I've been able to achieve and many of the words that I've shared with you that were of great resource to you come directly from my experience with the Baha'i faith. Now, I'm not going to uh, share too much about that with you here today because, you know, maybe it doesn't fit. Maybe it doesn't apply to our uh, you know, conversation at this point. But again, I'll put another link down below where I have a Facebook group where we can talk a little bit about it. And I rose up, right? Tore down, rent, destroyed, popped the bicep, rose back up and became Yo Elliot, right? Yo Elliot was at the top. Yo, Yo Elliot was when I described what Robert Bly says here as high, right? Yo Elliot wasn't high. Yo Elliot was high, rising up, spirit. And, uh, you probably, if you've been watching these videos for long enough, and if you haven't, I'm going to do my best here today to create some resource links down below for you. But around the uh, end of 2000, mid-2014, a conscious, it was happening, but I became very conscious of a going down process. Happening within me, right? And I'm just going to read that again. He says, uh, or oh, it was on my phone. Either conscious or unconscious, there's a going down process. And, uh, and I felt it. I felt it happening in my soul. And I even made some videos where I was like, yeah, I was lamenting. Right? Again, Elliot with his transparency. I was just lamenting. And so at one point, finally, I said, I'm going to quit. I'm gonna, I'm, I can't make videos anymore. Because to go down means to be silent. To be unseen. Right? And I began the going down process. Right? And, and uh, as much as I knew I was supposed to go down in order to soul retrieve, in order to heal, in order to be reborn, I struggled and I fought against it. And this is where you see me coming back with premature attempts at resurrection, like the video series in, in uh, April 2015 resurrection. I wasn't ready to be resurrected. <laughs> I just started going down. But from business partner pressures, you know, you guys, you know, people who want, where are you? Why are you, why'd you disappear? Um, you know, so many other pressures. I prematurely came back, right? And I knew it was premature. I knew it was premature so much so that even when I made videos, I started wearing my sunglasses because I didn't want to be seen, right? If you watch some of the videos in 2015 where I'm interviewing the people, all the celebrities that came here for the Strength Camp Challenge, I was doing that because I wanted to do it and I, and I honor those people, but I also didn't want to be seen. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about, you know, how that came about, uh, that where I decided, like, that's it, I'm just going to put on my sunglasses later on, but I didn't want to be seen, quite frankly, you know? It's called boundaries. It's called putting a band-aid on the wound. You've got to cover up. And I've wanted to cover up. 
So the going down process was stunted because I prematurely keep, kept coming back until I popped my other bicep. Some of you have noticed in some of the videos I made earlier this year that my bicep looks funny. It does. This is the one I tore in 2010. This is the one I tore in 2015. Looks a little funny, right? Doesn't go all the way through. And, uh, and that's because, uh, well, it was a wound to keep me down. <laughs> right? This happened in uh, September, after I came back from Europe, where I was jumping and screaming and yelling and doing dynamic meditation when I should have been praying and meditating and sitting silently, right? Uh, but you know, I, I did what I had to do until one day, interestingly enough, I come to strength camp, right? And I, and I had known that I shouldn't have been training. I had known that it was time for me just to do yoga and, and meditate. But I, ego. I came back in here one day and Mark is coaching and, uh, and I'm real flamboyant. I, you know, hey, Elliot Hulse has got a lot of energy. So I'm throwing my energy all over the place. We're doing the workouts and in between sets, I decide to get on the rings and I do what I've done a thousand times, which is a skin the cat. Skin the cat up, skin the cat down. What the fuck? First time, skinned it, scanned it. Tore my bicep. <laughs> I admit it now, unlike the first time when I tore my bicep and tears came because I was mourning the death of a version of myself that I knew wasn't sustainable, when I tore it this time, I was fucking mad at myself. I was like, God damn it, Elliot. Because I knew I shouldn't have been there. I even said to my guys, I was like, I don't belong at strength camp. I don't belong here right now, right? In that stage, in that time, in my life, it didn't make sense for me to be here because I'm in a going down process. And uh, so God knows what I'm really supposed to be doing. I know what I'm really supposed to be doing. And every time we, all of us, can I share this because I think maybe you might find some semblance in your story, uh, knocks you right back on course. So the tearing of my bicep was a brand new wound. That at that point I said, that's why you haven't seen much of me since the fall of last year. I said, well, that's it. I'm going down and I don't know when I'm coming back up. That's it. And, uh, and I shouldn't have been coming back up because you see the way I can talk to you here right now again like I used to back in the day? I couldn't even do that. I didn't have the enthusiasm. I was still in a healing process. Healing here, healing here in my body, but also healing here. So since that time, I've been doing a lot of internal work and I have been doing a lot of soul searching. And in April of this year, it seems almost as if I had a dream. It seems almost as if I was reborn. Right now, of course, you look at me and you're like, Elliot, you're full of shit. You weren't reborn. You didn't die. I'm talking about character birth and rebirth. The, the death isn't just of the physical body. Death is of the ego, ego death. A lot of young people, and I share this with you because again, you might find yourself in this place. A lot of young people, a lot of people in general who have a hankering for death, who think I need to kill myself, uh, suicide, thoughts of suicide. Those are not wrong. Those feelings aren't wrong. To want to die to yourself, to want to commit suicide is not wrong. It's just that you're looking at it the wrong way. It is not a physical suicide. It's not a physical death. It is a character or an ego death. Who you are right now, right? I'm preaching all over the place today. But if you're watching this right now and you have the feeling that you want to kill yourself or you have the feeling that I, I want to die, it's good. Just know that you're looking at it the wrong way. You must die. Your ego must die. Who you are today is no longer resourceful for who you're going to be, who you are to be next. For you to fulfill your greatest purpose here on this planet, in this lifetime, you have to have multiple deaths to immature versions of yourself so that you could be reborn as a stronger version of yourself. That's how the process goes. All right. So... 
as I experienced my rebirth in April, many things began to start coming together for me. Many things started making more sense. The bigger picture began to appear. I mentioned in my last video how Strength Camp all of a sudden now has all these multiple pieces, all of which were very important, but me being Elliot Hulse from 2014, even 2015, prior to my second wound, couldn't do it. Who you are today might need to die for you to do what you need to do for the next phase. And, uh, and I knew what the new phase was. I knew that it was important for me to get Strength Camp running as a entity in and of itself without Elliot Hulse. I knew I needed to remove myself from the videos. I knew I needed to empower the other coaches. Look at, part of the reason why I give uh, carte blanche, why I open up the possibility for all my coaches to have all their own uh, videos on this channel and that I feature them is because I want to empower them. It can't be the Elliot Hulse show all the time. Elliot Hulse will die. I'll die and I'll die. You know, I can't be here forever. Nobody can be here forever. So my character will die. I have to make sure that my family can carry on. I may physically die. I gotta make sure that the family can carry on. So when you see these videos of the other coaches here, it's a matter of me stepping out of the way so that Strength Camp can live on its own. It can breathe on its own. Also, as I spoke about, there is no reason why Strength Camp can't be worldwide. None. If you're watching this, you might be in Mumbai. Right? Is that even a country? Dubai and then with an M. I made that shit up. Is it a real country? Let me know. You might be somewhere else that I've never even heard of. There's a, there's a, there's a place called Isle of Man, I think off the coast of Scotland or Ireland. The Isle of Man, I once, when I uh, first started, uh, I had the bracelets, the, the wristbands, and I was promoting them, and me and my children were, would send them out from my living room, and we'd see all the addresses to where we were sending it, and that was the most interesting one. Apparently, there's a place called Isle of Man, and I will be there someday. It's destined to happen. So, Strength Camp International, Strength Camp Media, I began this whole process by creating products, but I stopped. I needed to have the wound to be rebirthed so that I can work with my team, work with my family, work with my soul in order to build up these other things so that they're, so that they're gifts to the world. Right? The videos I make are a gift. I get that. But there's so much more to be done. Right? So much more we can do. Why limit yourself? Right? Why limit yourself to your own self-imposed limitations, and I don't do that too much. I'm pretty fucking limitless. But then other people, right? So, why settle? And it's not a neurotic chasing after anything. It's not a neurotic having to win. I don't even keep track of how much money I make. Not because I make so much of it, because I'm just, as long as I got food on the table, I really don't care. I just want that creative process. I want to do these things because they're fun. I want to make stuff. I want to help people, right? And, above and beyond, reconnecting with my faith. Knowing that the work that I'm doing supports eternity, right? Because so many of us want to be successful for our own narcissistic desires, right? I want a hot tub where I can get a blowjob by a model with big boobs and then get into my Ferrari and drive in Beverly Hills and then, oh, oh, oh see all these things? What the fuck does that do for anybody else, right? If you're not serving others, which, you know, in, in many cases, the only way you can get that is to serve others. But I've never been a, you know, flashy guy. I bought a Range Rover once and I gave it back six months later because I was like, ah! I bought myself a fucking Nissan. It's just me, right? You know, but you've got to be true. Got to be real. And I'm just trying to be real here. So, knowing that the work that I do is not just about Elliot Hulse, me growing in popularity and fame does nothing for eternity, for the world, for when I'm gone, when I'm dead. Sure, these videos will be here. But if I do these videos so that I can put more money in my pockets, well, who gives a fuck? 
But if I do the work that I do with the intent on making this a better place, unifying mankind, believing in the strongest version of you and you and you and you, and giving you the tools that you could then take the strongest version of you and empower other people. Now it's a virus, right? It's a love virus. Feel good about that. And then of course, bioenergetics and dynamic meditation. I need the time, I need the space, I need to be the type of person that can handle those gifts. So my friends, think in terms of your particular wound, even if you're dealing with one right now, and know this, whatever struggle you're dealing with, whatever challenge you're facing, whatever injury, whatever wound you have, Right now, it is a birth opportunity. It's an opportunity to, like the female, go in and allow the internal processes to put the pieces together where a new you can be rebirthed. It is the principle of death and rebirth. It is the principle of catabolic and anabolic. It is the principle of going down so that you can rise up done.